welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us today. It's wonderful to have you all here and we're very grateful to be hearing from Ake Rosen um, from Gaia Biomaterials who's joining us all the way from Sweden. My name is uh, Aki Rosen and um, I work you know, to contribute uh, to save the earth, the planet, and uh, we are working a lot together with the European Union and uh, also um, uh, FN. Uh, so we are working uh, worldwide uh, to uh, create material to find alternative to fossil uh, plastics. So uh, we took the name uh, Gaia. Uh, therefore, Gaia uh, is taken from the Greek mythology. Uh, Gaia is born from the eggshell, and then the eggshell coming to the ground, and then we have a fertilizer. So therefore, we have a growing like for a forest and uh, another greens. So um, then we got uh, vegetation. Yeah, the next, please. So we have always eggshell in the focus. Eggshell consists of 90% calcium carbonate and 10% uh, protein to, uh, to bind it together. Uh, but calcium carbonate is earth own packages. We take uh, the calcium carbonate as a loan to produce products. But 10% uh, binder is too little. So therefore, we have to increase uh, the binding material. And the binding material is, of course, biomaterial and biodegradable uh, fully. Next. Yeah. Around, around the whole world, we have calcium carbonate. Without calcium carbonate, the earth should die of acid. Calcium carbonate has a pH value of 10.5. So therefore, they naturalize the acid. And also, when we have the eggshell in the focus, of course, we would like to save as much uh, material, fossil material from the earth as possible. And also, our material, we, we would like to have renewable and also so we can recycle our material to new products or we can convert it to renewable energy without any emission of fossil CO2. So therefore we would like to create a human world for the coming generations. But this belongs to all of us. Next. So uh, we have here uh, a picture what we, uh, where we are. Uh, I cannot see it here for, from this uh, there. So we, you can see up to the right, we have a biodegradable. Uh, uh, so we have fully biodegradable bio resources in our material. I can take next. So our material, as I uh, told you before, it is uh, based mainly of calcium carbonate and then we have starch, it can be white. We have a vegetable oil also as a binder. And then we have a bio, biodegradable ester. This is an acid modified with alcohol. Yes. And here we have some products we can show you what, what we do. We produce uh, drinking caps, uh, straws, bottles, trays uh, for uh, food. Uh, special for meat and, uh, and, uh, and fish. And then we also produce all, all, a lot of covers, uh, aprons, for example, here to the hospitals. And uh, therefore, the hospitals, they like our material very much. Therefore, all the aprons will go to incineration. And then we have no emission of CO2. Only here in my town, they say 4 million tons CO2 emission when the hospital are using our apron. And then also we produce uh, bags, carry bags, and also uh, forks and uh, cutleries, forks and knives and, uh, and spoons in our material. And all this material are fully biodegradable. And we can we take next? So, 
uh, also I can show you, you later, we are not creating any microplastic. We have also certification, of course, from TÜV Austria, Minsot. So we have with our material for the film, special for bags, you can see we have eco compost home. It means you can bring it to the compost in your garden. And over 100 micron is the industrial composting possible. We have also for uh, uh, compost industrial, for trays, for example, up to one millimeter. Uh, and, and also we have a certification for, from uh, Din Sartre, which is also a German institute. Can we take next? next? And uh, also I can tell you um, that we also have uh, uh, certification that we not create any microplastics. Yes. So we have we have seen with our material from the beginning to at the end, with our material you will save up to eighty percent fossil CO two emission. So this is very very impo uh, important. And this this is done by European Union with uh, with us LCA. We have not done our own LCA. It was the European Union who had done it. Next, next. So we um, here in Helsingborg and in our city here is um, if they will go over to uh, uh, our material to replace the plastic bags. And uh, then we saved for one year, uh, same uh, CO2 emission if we uh, stand by the whole uh, uh, car, uh, uh, all cars in, 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 our, in our city. So we save a lot of CO2. We can take next. Next, please. Yeah, here you can also see if, if we use the bags instead, uh, we, uh, in, uh, we replace all plastic bags and uh, and then we uh, we save the cl climate a lot. So we 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 save uh, 6,400 tons CO2 per, per year here in Helsingborg, it's only Helsingborg. And, uh, and, um, and we save, uh, 3,900 tons if we compare with uh, Yeah, here you can also see if, if we use the bags instead, uh, we, uh, we replace all plastic bags and uh, and then we uh, we save the clay climate a lot. So we we, we save 6,400 tons CO2 per, per year here in Helsingborg, it's only Helsingborg. And, uh, and, um, and we save uh, 3,900 tons if we compare with uh, with polyethylene carry bags. And also you can see here, we uh, with the LCA says that we use more CO2 and we spread out uh, from the beginning to the, to the end. Next, please. And, and we have a lot of an advantage with our biodolomer. We uh, reduce a lot of uh, energy cons consumption. Therefore, uh, you don't need to, uh, our biomaterial, you don't need to pre-dry. Uh, we uh, don't need corona treating before uh, printing or decoration. And uh, when you produce with our material, you can uh, reduce a lot the temperature in the process. We, uh, our material are white, but it's not titanium. titanium. It is uh, calcium carbonate, and uh, and uh, also it's a very very big important thing. It you can use the existing machines, so uh, new no additional investment is necessary. Yeah, the, what what. I have. Thank you so much. Everyone is welcome to send through questions uh, as you think of those. Uh, we do have a few that we've prepared um, ahead of time, um, but just 
to sort of uh, recap, so um, the biodolymer is the material that, that you as Gaia Materials have developed, correct? Yes, it is. Um, we start all, already 1974 to uh, produce uh, biodolymer. The first, the first product was a uh, golf bag that we use uh, calcium carbonate and potato starch. But we was too early. Nobody were, were, were interested in that time. But then, uh, 2015, the Europe, European Union called us if we if we could uh, take a project for three million uh, euro, so we can find uh, material that we we could replace fossil plastic, and and and, and this project is finalized, and uh, and now we have proved we can do it. Okay, and so the, the is the biodolymer based on the calcium carbonate compound, or is it a combination of all the the renewable resources. Yeah, so we have the calcium carbonate in, in, in the base, and then we must have a binder. We also have a facility that, uh, so uh, we have another biomaterial. Uh, we have one material we call green P. It is from Braskem in, uh, from uh, Brazil. But if we should, uh, go over to uh, to uh, green PE instead for the fossil PE. Then we we have to cover the forest a lot in in Brazil. It, and uh, and uh, then we it, then it's not good for our climate that we must keep the forest the jungle in uh, in South Africa, uh, South America. Uh, therefore, we would like to, when we produce our material, we, we would like to take the resources from many resources, not only from one. We are not only how many of our competitors they are working with PLA. This is for sugarcane. If we should take the sugarcane to replace the plastic, what, what, what shall we grow it? Uh, we take a lot of, la of land and so on. Uh, so, so therefore, we take uh, resources uh, f from uh, from um, from different uh, places in, in the world. Uh, for example, we have starch that we can use wheat. We use vegetable oil. We use uh, a little bit of PLA, and, 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 and of course, calcium carbonate is always all time our base. Okay, um, I, I completely agree, and I think there's a lot to be said for. Uh, the fact that if, if people do migrate to one specific alternative to fossil-based sources, then it'll inevitably lead to over-exploitation of that particular resource, which could have unintended consequences, as you mentioned with uh, sort of deforestation um, in South America and those associated issues. Um, I see we do have a question in the chat from Samuel that says, are there any negatives to the biodolymer? It sounds like the best solution to plastic. Yeah, so of course, uh, bad and bad impact. It is, uh, it is, it is. Also, uh, the bad is, of course, the people sh shall not think they can spread out our material on the landfill. Therefore, that will be degradable. It is so we cannot do. Uh, so we, we must use uh, the standard uh, collection of material. But we have, uh, we have uh, some of calling us, okay, very good with your material, and now we can spread it, uh, also we can catch it in the, in the forest, and we can dump it in the, in the ocean and so on. No, 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 absolutely not. But, uh, it can, uh, but we have these kind of comments sometimes, especially from the authorities. I see, um, and this, this links in quite well with a question that's here in the Q&A box that says, uh, does biodolymer decompose outside of compost piles? Um, and how does this compare with decomposition of uh, banana peels, for uh, example? So if you're, so re in relation to this question, if your products were to end up in landfill or in the environment, what would happen? Yeah, then they would disappear. So we have a certification in the compost, you have a deg degradation in six months. If you put it in the forest, they can take, yeah, about uh, one year, and and, and then then it is um, mulch again, mull again. So um, 
so um, but now we're also working with deg degradation in the in the ocean and uh, we have found a way but we are now looking for for certification that we it's very important that we don't we do not create any microplastic it's very important Agreed. Um, <laughs> and I think often um, things that do biodegrade um, and don't compost, for example, then just break down into smaller and smaller pieces of plastic, um, which is often overlooked. Um, uh, so in relation to the microplastics, you mentioned that the product that, that um, Bagaya Biomaterials has developed doesn't break down into microplastics, which is sometimes the case with right. biodegradable right. products where they'll break down and they're not visible, but the microplastics persist. Um, can you expand a little bit about how you've circumvented this problem um, and um, perhaps the uh, the process that, that it goes through to get approved, to confirm that there are no microplastics um, in the compost heaps, for example? Yeah, so a stand-up plastic, plastic will um, be, um, break down with uh, UV light, but not our material. Our material, we have developed uh, en enzymes, uh, so it is uh, food for the bacteria. So uh, the bacteria take care of the, our material and eat it up fully. So therefore, we are not creating any microplastic. Microplastic you get when the material are break down with the UV light, but the molecules are still there. But with our material, is fully degradable. I see. Uh, and I see we have a, another question here in the chat that says, uh, what is the durability of the biodolomer? Is it only for single-use products, or could it be reused uh, and repurposed? And so our material, there are so many that they say our um, bio, biomaterials is, uh, you cannot recycle it. But this is bullshit. Uh, therefore, we have our biomaterial, our compatos, they have a complete an an another composition. We have ours and our material, you can reuse it. So, uh, so we can do new uh, products of it. And also we can uh, produce uh, biogas of it. Uh, we can, uh, with uh, incineration, we get uh, renewable energy without any emission of CO2. So we can recycle it. Yes, we can. But I'm talking for our material. I'm not talking for another biomaterials. Of course, of course. Um, yeah, obviously, you're, you're an expert um, in your specific materials and the biodolomer. Um, so I think um, I'm sure that question was referring to uh, specifically your products. Um, so, so I know you mentioned that it can be sort of recycled for energy consumption. Could yes. it be recycled uh, in terms of mechanical or chemical recycling to produce a similar product again? You don't need any chemical. Uh, you can uh, you can even uh, our material. You can even add it in polyethylene. You can mix okay. it with all polyethylene. So if, if the our customers they use both polyethylene and our material, and and, and then the waste uh, they can uh, the, uh, the industrial waste you can mix it no problem. Okay, uh, then we have another question here in the Q and A box that says uh, they're they're asking about the calcium carbonate base. Uh, so referring to the lime, um, and does this affect the pH? Um, of the soil or the ocean um, or the particular environment where the product biodegrades as the calcium carbonate breaks down? Uh, the calcium carbonate cannot break down. The, we, we take it as a loan to do products and then we get it back to the earth again. So therefore we have no impact on the uh, earth resources. This is zero. We give it back again. Okay, I see. So, um, so ha have any uh, tests been done on the uh, the composition of the soil and the pH of the soil in the compost? Uh, of course, uh, if you have calcium carbonate, you get uh, a better um, what's it like pH value. So the so the so the compost compost uh, cannot be acid. So it is a positive pH value. For, okay. for to spread out on the grass and for the growing. It's very, very good fertilizer. Okay. Um, 
Uh, and in terms of the the home composting and the industrial composting of your different products, um, is there quite an established practice of composting, whether it be at home or municipal collection of products to be industrially composted? Is that quite an established practice in Sweden? No. So I have never seen industrial composting in my life. I don't know who else. <laughs> industrial composting but i know very well the home composting and therefore our material they start already with 30 25 to 30 degrees to be compostable so and then the temperature are increasing a lot in the compost so when you're coming up to 40 45 degrees and then the degradation gives very very fast but industrial composting then you must up to 70 degrees and, and I have never seen that kind of compost uh, facilities. I see. Um, so, so products in Sweden, if they are designed to be composted, are they very likely to end up in a composting facility, whether it be a home facility or an industrial one? Are they very likely to be placed there or is there an opportunity where it may be mismanaged and I go to landfill or the environment? I can I can tell you they like to to burn it to uh, to energy they like it very much therefore you don't spread out any CO2 and uh, and also the ash this is calcium carbonate and then they use it to an another material for example cement or something like that so they recycle it but uh, most important thing here we uh, we uh, naturalize the acid. Uh, sorry, can you elaborate a bit on the, the last bit there about um, the acid? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, if we uh, if we take uh, fast food producers, and 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 then you uh, normally you collect it, um, but. Uh, the incineration station, they don't like it, that, that for, they like to burn it. All, all the food waste, all and, and mixed with our material, therefore then you have no, when you uh, burn fossil material, you don't have any emission of CO2. And, and this is most important for the moment to save the earth. Of course, um, particularly relevant uh, in this uh, last week or two with uh, the COP26 discussions happening in Glasgow. Um, there, there's another question here that says, are um, bioplastics and compostable products, so specifically um, the products that you produce at Gaia Biomaterials, are they generally more expensive than um, fossil-based plastic products? Um, uh, no, uh, therefore, uh, for one year ago, uh, the polyethylene cost about uh, one euro. Now the polyethylene costs two euro. So therefore, our prices today is very close. But if you, but if you see, uh, but if you save uh, energy when we produce products with our material, and then we reduce the consumption of energy. So I will say. They're roughly the same price. They're, they're rather the same price. There's no big difference today. But for one year ago, there was a big difference. That for the polyethylene, for example, or another plastic, that was half of the price. But now the plastic is a double price. So, uh, so therefore, yeah, we have roughly the same price. What you what you have for for the volume of plastics today. If you take engineering plastic, also we can have a, uh, have a market. And, uh, so uh, that we are cheaper. So we are cheaper than ABS and nylon and uh, polystyrene and so on. That we, that we are cheaper. Okay. Uh, then we have another question here that says, what is the end? Um, what are the end products of the biodegrading process? And does this change um, across different environmental conditions? No, also uh, at the end, of course, here in Sweden, they would like to we collect it to incineration. 
they okay. uh, they are so at the end they would they would like to burn it to get the fossil free uh, emission i see so um so in terms of the end products in a composting heap um so how, how would the product differ um in terms of its end of life um the specific components that it breaks down into if for example it doesn't go to a um uh, sorry, an industrial, if it's not burnt, um, no, what would it then break down into? No, not going to an industrial, but but this can go to the compost. Now, we don't have so much compost in, in Sweden either, uh, but uh, they are the, mostly they go to a biogas. So, so so therefore, we have a lot of customers. They, they have our our bags uh, in the household, so uh, they the, bring down uh, the food waste and then the food waste with our bag and go to biogas plant okay uh and in so it would break down then into its sort of calcium carbonate its starch and then um sort of obviously the heat and energy for yeah. the biogas you can yeah you cannot break down the calcium carbonate they are still there but it shall be there but it, it, it is good therefore we also we spread out calcium carbon out in the forest and uh, in the seas uh, to naturalize the acid. So, uh, so, it, so also uh, you use a lot of calcium carbonate, uh, calcium carbonate as a fertilizer. You're referring to calcium carbonate being used to neutralize acids. Yeah. Um, is that? What what particular acids would those be that you're referring to? Uh, was that I didn't understand what you what, what you was meaning? Uh, so you said um, a minute ago that calcium carbonate is used to neutralize acids in the environment. Yes. Yes. So yes. W which particular environments uh, are you referring to? Would this be agricultural um, areas? Uh, agriculture. Okay. So is it used to neutralize um, yeah. sort of yeah. ammonium yeah. overuse? Yes. Uh, yeah, for for, uh, for example, in uh, China, they have uh, forbidden ag agriculture field. So they use, uh, in many uh, places now, they use our material. And uh, our material uh, breaks down to the earth again. And then the calcium carbonate is working as a fertilizer. We have, we have also many customers, they are producing uh, flower pots for growing. And then they put our pots in the in the ground, and then our our pots disappear. But then the calcium carbonate is working as a fertilizer for growing of the plant. It's a very popular, uh, uh, what can I say, in uh, in Europe, uh, this kind of that okay. we use our material a lot. Uh, and how how yeah. what? Sorry, carry on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, we we have a lot of customers. Yes, for 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 uh, flower pots, it is uh, for growing and uh, disappear in the ground. So they don't need to. If you use another material like polystyrene and so on, they don't need to pick it up and bring it to incineration. I see. And uh, how widely used are your products um, on the on an international scale? We uh, deliver it to uh, export to 32 countries today. We, uh, we did delivery, for example, to US. We uh, deliver the material, uh, for example, for bread. Therefore, they don't like to use polyethylene, what they have done before. Therefore, uh, the plasticizer, they have a mi migration to the, to the bread. And now we can prove uh, that we have impact on our uh, hormones in in our body with the uh, plasticizer when the migration from the plastic. So uh, therefore, they would like to replace uh, the polyethylene lens bags for bread. They'd like to uh, use our material instead. I see. Uh, are you referring to BPA there when you talk about the plasticizer that's been picked up in uh, bloodstreams? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, um, so therefore, we we also deliver it to uh, to uh, a lot to uh, 
Brazil, we, the, all countries in uh, Europe, but now the market increase a lot in Asia. We, uh, the Asian, for example, if you take the hospitals, uh, the hospitals in Sweden, they buy the aprons from China. We export aprons to China. So, uh, so therefore we can today. Ex so, uh, so therefore we can today export to aprons to China. Therefore, the containers they have a lot of containers uh, uh, here in Europe. Uh, uh, so they have never gone uh, gone back to uh, the Asia. Uh, so, so therefore the the containers they goes back empty. So therefore the transportation from Europe to China, for example, is very, very cheap today. Therefore, we can export to, for example, to China today. We export also to Vietnam, we export to Japan, we export to Indonesia uh, and Philippines. I see, okay. Uh, there's a, another question here that's, um, that was raised that says, if I understand correctly, you said biodolima is recyclable and uh, recyclable with other plastic polymers. Won't the enzymes uh, that are used to facilitate the biodegradability in the biodolima affect the quantity, sorry, the quality of recyclable products, especially when mixed with other polymers? Perhaps I misunderstood. Yes. For example, also, uh, if we should start to produce uh, our material in South Africa, we have the old resources there. So we also save a lot of transportation. We would we would like to be close to the consumers. Um, I, I see. Um, and in terms of the recyclability uh, and the biodegradability, does that affect the quality of recycled products if the biodolima products are recycled? Uh, we can we can will not we can will not say we have. A, it be the same properties. We we don't improve the properties now. But 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 we are very wide. The, the properties with our material, we can replace polyethylene, polystyrene, polypropylene, ABS, and uh, and some other plastics. It, it 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 is we we have a lot of grades for that. Now also okay. now also we increase a lot for. Uh, for uh, bottles, uh, also the screw caps. You spread screw caps a lot on the ground today. So, uh, but uh, with our material, we deliver a material for uh, to um, screw caps today to US uh, that they use it for the milk bottles. Okay, so so the biodolima products would not be able to be recycled in existing polyethylene recycling streams? No. No, no. okay. Um, but you can mix it and produce new products of it. But, but you, okay. there you can, you can do, there we can do. I see. Uh, and if we, but if you add our material in the polyethylene, and that they cannot be biodegradable, no. But okay. You, that you can mix it to produce new products, but will not be biodegradable. Okay, I see. Uh, so, so the biodolima is uh, biodegradable on its own, and it can be used to substitute yes. polyethylene, which would then probably yes. not be biodegradable or recyclable. Yes. Okay, I see. Um, and so I see we are running slightly close to our <laughs> uh, our end time of. Uh, 345 uh, here in South Africa. Um, so there's just one more um, sort of sector of questions that we want to get into, um, as you alluded to this earlier. In terms of the South African markets, um, do you think that these products would be successful um, in Africa um, and keeping in mind Africa's socioeconomic challenges? Uh, so um, we must save the climate. So I, I, I don't think they. Uh, even in uh, South Africa, they cannot stop it. Therefore, we must save the climate, and 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 we must do something now. 
we we uh, we have a lot of problem with the climate today so therefore i don't think i think they will be happy around the whole world that we can see how we increase uh, around the world or uh, with our they do a lot of progress now with our material around the whole world so i, I see how it in increase very very fast Therefore, this, we must save the, the, the climate changes, even in South Africa. And now also the price is going closer and closer. So there are so small difference today in the price between, for example, uh, uh, polyethylene and uh, our material. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're certainly on the same page with regard to the climate um, and then certainly a, a number of steps need to be taken there in order to um, reduce the carbon emissions globally as well as in South Africa. Um, mm -hmm. But in relation specifically to your products, obviously there's no um, sort of production currently on the African continent. So would how, how would your how would your product um, sort of take off in Africa, keeping in mind the fact that there is quite a an established uh informal markets for buyback centers and um the use of plastic after its initial use mm. so i think south africa will will be a big market for us absolutely I see. So, uh, and absolutely i don't think they can stop us we have we have one problem now i'm going to more political things the producer of plastic fossil plastic they would like to keep the market. That for now, the car industry is going more and more over to electricity cars. And, and we have countries they, to survive, they export oil, for sale oil. They would like to keep the market. And therefore, they, uh, now the more uh, cars are going over to more uh, electrical engines, they lose a lot of production of oil. Therefore, they are talking to we must increase the volume of plastic. Therefore, then we have no market for oil. So uh, there are many political things behind it. So there we have a big problem. Therefore, they, they prepare or authorities that, that uh, for example, a biomaterial bio now is not good, they cannot recycle and so on, so on. They spread it out on the, on the soil and so on. But it is bullshit. Therefore, they do everything to keep the market. Therefore, then they cannot survive. For they must produce and export the oil. So therefore, they try, of course, to uh, go against us. So uh, we have a lot to do with uh, with the information to the citizens. Certainly, and it's it's definitely a very complicated issue with many factors that need to be taken into consideration. Um, I see there is a comment here in the chat from uh, Emma Albertson that says the biodolima is available in South Africa through compost it. Um, so yes. you can yes yes yes. Um, then uh, I see. We're very close to our um, end time. I just have one more question, um, just in relation to this, and, and you've brought up the climate factor qu quite a few times. Um, in terms of, I, th I believe there have been quite a few different studies that have referred to recycling as one of the more uh, carbon effective um, methods of producing more products. Um, do you have any comments on that? No, no I don't have any comments on that. So. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, so I don't see uh, any other questions here in, in the chat um, or in the Q&A box, but if anyone does have any questions, you're, you're welcome to send those through to us and we can pass those along. Yeah, um, simply to compost it and uh, uh, if you have some more questions, no problem, and, and then we, we will answer. Of course. Um, and so I'd just like to say on behalf of uh, SST, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to present for us today. It's very interesting to hear about the the product that you've developed um, and i'm sure there's we, we can certainly see that there's a lot of different uh different work and a lot of research that's gone into this um so it's very exciting to hear about the the growing sector and the challenges that you've managed to 
to solve in terms of um, breaking down into bioplastics and things like that. Sorry, microplastics. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that it's really, really been great to, to hear about uh, dye biomaterials and the products that you're developing. Uh, so thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this afternoon. Um, and a special thank you to our presenter today um, and the whole Gaia Biomaterials team. Uh, we're going to close the session here for today, um, but I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.